Good morning, brothers and sisters. Brother Will here. Before I go any further, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, so not last night, but the night before, I had uh, a repetitive dream that every time I woke up and went back to sleep, I kept seeing this. It was really a vision because it wasn't like a, a scene or anything, but kept getting it over and over and over. I'm going to get to, super encouraging by the way, I'm going to get to that momentarily, but it was awesome because the Lord gave me that dream and there's a personal encouragement that I got from it, but then there's also an encouragement for the body of Christ that came from it. And then I was a, kind of attacked by the enemy, kind of got sucker punched by the enemy on the way to work um, by just bringing up my past. And uh, what's awesome is the Lord had three, so two brothers and one sister come into work that um, two of them had never been there before. And uh, we just ministered to each other. It was an awesome time. So I'm going to get into that uh, right now. So anyway, um, talking about bringing up our past, uh, what's interesting is um, after this attack, um, the the scripture that really like was unfolded to me, I'm going to read it to you guys because I've heard it a million times. I'm sure you have too. And I've always kind of understood it on a, on a more surface level rather than the, the depth of it. But the Holy Spirit gave me the, the full deep meaning yesterday. So I'm going to read it real quick here. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat of the, out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt that thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Um, so here's the thing. Take whatever that speck may be, whatever sin, right? Um, you know, whether it be, let's, there's alcoholism, there's, you know, sexual immorality, there's um, people cussing, there's, I mean, fill in, fill in whichever one you want to use. Um, I always imagined that taking the beam out of your own eye was, let's say, someone who had struggled with alcoholism and then gotten saved and, you know, cleaned up their life and everything else and was no longer struggling with it would be the right one to go and minister to someone who struggled with alcoholism, right? Because they they had seen how to get the the beam out of their eye and then they could go and help someone else with the speck. That's such a, after yesterday, that's such a shallow way to interpret that verse. There's a much deeper um, implication there. And that goes, speaks directly to law and grace. The beam is someone who's trying to uphold the entire law, okay? And so therefore, when they see someone breaking even one law, because they're not under grace, they're trying to uphold the law. When they see someone breaking one, you know, of the Ten Commandments, one of the laws, they get all up in arms and they're, you know, accusing and bringing condemnation on this person. When they're trying to uphold the whole law, and they have the entire beam of the law in their eye. So that's why we have to, this is this entire section is about grace and it's about the blood of Jesus because what, what ultimately can wash the speck out of someone's eye? What ultimately can wash the entire beam out of someone's eye? And that is only the blood of Jesus. We can't, someone can't minister to someone else and set them free from sin in, an, in any other way than offering them Jesus' finished work on the cross. Amen? That is literally the only thing that can take a speck out of someone's eye. And you can't offer that until you yourself have received that and understand the amazing gift of it, how we are no longer under law, we are under grace. I just want to read this section from, from James because it really speaks to this exact thing. And I mentioned alcoholism and and what have you, but it really goes, you know, this, this passage actually talks about a couple of other things. Um, so, so here we are, we're in James chapter two, um, verse 10, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all, all for he that said, do not commit adultery said also do not kill. 
Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Reminder, just a little side note here. Remember what Jesus said. If you call your brother a fool, you've, you're guilty of basically stabbing him in the back. So, again, Jesus went in, in that whole Sermon on the Mount um, passage. He was showing just how deep these commandments run and how it's impossible for anyone to uphold them all. So James is saying if you break one of them, you're, you're guilty of breaking the whole law. Um, let me keep going, though. Verse 12, so speak ye, and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Again, a lot of you probably missed that because I did the first time I read it. So speak, and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. This goes back to that Matthew chapter 7 passage. We shouldn't be going around talking about pointing out different specks in people's eyes if we ourselves are under the law of liberty, if we understand that Jesus has cleansed us from all unrighteousness. The blood of, of Jesus covers all of our sin. Keep going here in verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth, rejoiceth against judgment. So those two passages taken together really paints, paints a full picture of what it really means to be under the law of liberty. Paul also in Romans talks about being under grace and not under law. So, um, so yeah, this whole, this whole attack that came against me yesterday was just having to deal with my past. And I, I know several of you on here, you know, are from broken marriages and have been remarried and so forth and so on. And there, there is, there is grace for that. If we were under the law, there would not be grace for that. But Jesus, his blood is enough. His grace is sufficient. And that goes, whatever, fill in the blank with the sin. You know, uh, I, back when I was a baby Christian, I would kind of get, you know, all, all, all concerned when people would cuss around me and everything else. And is it good to cuss? No. Should we cuss? No. But is there grace for that? Does the blood of Jesus cover that? Absolutely. So back then it was difficult for me to take that speck out of someone's eye because I was still learning what it meant to live under, under grace when I was 15. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's really... His grace is amazing, and it's sufficient for all of our shortcomings, all of our failings, and the beam has been removed if you're under grace. The speck has been removed if you're under grace. Amen? So what's cool is, what was really awesome, is in my work yesterday, these people that came to minister to me, um, and it wasn't, I was ministering to them, it was a divine appointment all around, and um but what, what this one said to me was, um, in the spirit, I see a cross over your head in the clouds. There's like a cloud with a cross over it, and the Lord Jesus has sealed you. It is so clear you're like walking under his authority, under his covering. And um, she, she said she saw that in the spirit. Now, I hadn't told her anything about my dream that I'm about to share with you guys. But um, that was just super encouraging after that that punch from the enemy that I'd gotten. And so um, what's awesome is what uh, what the enemy meant from, for harm, the Lord meant for good, amen? And so um, this entire kind of video with this whole passage I just read with you came out of that, enta that entire attack. Um, but anyway, the dream was the number 1450. And what's really cool is when I put in Google to find the image for this video, I, all I all I typed in was 1450 in the clouds because I kept falling asleep and I would see clouds and then I would see the number 1450 in like a faint red color. That's what I would see it in. Um, and so when I went to Google, all I all I googled was the number 1450 in the clouds, and you can see the the thumbnail I'm going to use for this video. It's it's actually red. So um, anyway, 1450. Now, the Lord, the Lord knows that with any number, uh, the chickens are shouting amen over there. Um, the Lord knows that uh, when I get a number, I go straight to Strong's with it. And this is awesome because 1450 is only used once in the New Testament. And I'm going to read you the verse where it's used. It's Hebrews 7.22. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. 1450 in the Greek means guarantee or surety. 
And so, um, like I said, it, it really encouraged me yesterday because with, with what the sister, with, with what her vision was, Sister Valerie, she saw this cross and the cloud. The cloud was a direct confirmation to me of the dream because she didn't know anything about my dream. And, um, and then the surety, you know, like, like she was just confirming again, like, you know, who has sealed me and everything else. And it was, it was just an awesome reminder. I didn't, I didn't need the reminder, obviously, but it was like, it was just a, a love note from the Holy Spirit. It was awesome. It was great. Um, but for those of us who are watching and waiting for the rapture, 1450 in the clouds, a surety, a guarantee that he's coming in the clouds. Amen. Um, so, uh, I, obviously texted this to my fellow Watchmen brothers on our text chain. And Kevin had some really other cool insights that he sent. First of all, he did the Gematria 1450. And one of the uh, Gematria words for 1450 is signs and wonders. And then he did a day count, which was 1450 from, because, you know, we're, we're watching, um, you know, tomorrow, basically August 31st with this full moon. Full moon. Um, again, it's not, I'm not, Sunday date here, just saying tomorrow is a high watch date for me personally, because I've always thought a full moon was uh, a very, a very big possibility for Jesus coming back based on a lot of scripture. But um, this is the last full moon before Feast of Trumpets. Okay. And I know that a lot of us are looking at Feast of Trumpets. Well, even on into Tabernacles and Day of Atonement and everything else. Don't get me wrong, this entire month is a high watch. I just happen to think that tomorrow really kicks off. I mean, we could easily go tomorrow, in, in my mind, because it's the last full moon before Peace of Trumpets. Um, so anyway, he sent me a day count for tomorrow, August 31st, 2023. He backed up 14, 50 days from that. And just interesting, it was September 11th, 2019. So um, I know... Uh, Brother Mike over at uh, Repo Man and several others out there. Uh, believe, and I, I don't know necessarily what I believe on this one. I mean, I'm, I'm open to uh, to discussion. I don't think it's a, a hard and fast thing, but a lot of people believe that Jesus himself was actually born on September 11th. So I um, thought that was a very interesting kind of day count, 1450 from tomorrow, the full moon, um, that we're really watching uh, closely for. Um for his return, that is. So, yeah, that was a really cool kind of correlation as well. So, be encouraged, brothers and sisters. I say all this to say, if you're one who's been attacked by legalism, by those who are walking under legalism, who are walking under law and not walking under grace, been attacked by, for your one thing that maybe you did in your past or one thing that maybe you still struggle with, the blood of Jesus is enough. His grace is sufficient. The blood of Jesus has covered you. He has cleansed you from all unrighteousness. You are walking according to grace, not according to law. So be encouraged in that way. And if you're one watching and waiting for the imminent soon return of our Lord Jesus in the clouds, um, be encouraged because it is a guarantee. It is a surety that he is coming. Amen. <sighs> I love you guys. Pray this video blesses you, and thank you as always for your for your very encouraging comments and your prayers for me, and I pray for you guys as well, and I look forward to meeting you all at the banquet table of the Master. Um, as we say always on this channel, in all that we say and do, may the Lord Jesus be magnified. God bless.